Some works of art speak to you, become a part of your life. You meet them right when you need them, and you can always return to them when you need comfort or inspiration. There's no other art form where this connection is as deep as with music, and for me, there are few works of music as special as Leanne Womack's The Way I'm Living. Oh, mama, the way that I'm living, lying in a sinning and I just can't change. Hello, I'm Cameron, also known as Gambas TV. In this new series, Cameron's Picks, I'll be talking about music and movies that mean a lot to me. Works of art in my two favourite mediums that have enhanced, influenced, and even changed my life. When thinking of which albums to cover for this series, The Way I'm Living was one of the first that came to mind, and one that was always calling out to me. It's an album that I can always turn to when I need something comforting and empowering to listen to. One that's as soft and mellow as it is intricate and powerful. It was the first country album I truly fell in love with, and without it there's a good chance I wouldn't listen to the genre as much as I do today. Released in 2014, The Way I'm Living is the 8th studio album by Leanne Womack, a Texas-born country singer best known for her 2000 hit, I Hope You Dance. I hope you dance. It was the first album of hers I'd heard. Indeed, it was the first time I'd even heard of Leanne at all. I was born in England, growing up with Britpop as my soundscape, and so until I was a high schooler living in America, all but the most famous country artists, Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, were alien to me. That all changed when I started actively trying to expand my musical horizons in my late teens, seeking out recommendations mainly through year-end and greatest of all time lists, especially Rolling Stone magazines. I don't much follow that magazine anymore, but I have them to thank for introducing me to many artists, classic and current, that I now rank amongst my favourites. But my Rolling Stone phase was more early high school, around 2010 to 2012. A bit later I discovered AllMusic, a fantastic music database, sort of like IMDB for music, that also features editors' reviews of pretty much every notable album in modern history, as well as consistent reviews of new releases. It was on AllMusic that I discovered The Way I'm Living, as it had been given a 4.5 out of 5 rating by critic Stephen Thomas Erlewine, and was featured as one of the site's featured releases near the time of its release. At the time I was in the mood for discovering new music in genres I wasn't familiar with, and for making new musical memories. That sense of random discovery, knowing it was more or less an album I'd stumbled upon than I wouldn't have were I not in the right place at the right time, no doubt influences my love for it. I remember quite clearly the first few times I listened to the album, which is something I can only say for a handful of records. At the time I was a semi-regular player of League of Legends, though not a good one as this video I made in September 2014 demonstrates. I'm a shameful multitasker, always wanting to kill two birds with one stone, and so I rarely play video games without listening to music at the same time. Indeed, I often play video games so I can listen to music, because I'm too fidgety to just sit down and listen to music on its own. So in late 2014, when I was in the transition phase between high school and moving temporarily to Europe at the end of the year, I spent a lot of my quote-unquote free time playing League while listening to new music. And of all the fantastic new music I discovered in this period, it was The Way I'm Living that left the deepest impact. I still remember very clearly the general feeling created when the moving images of League, a pretty intense reflex-driven game where one is expected by the competitive community to always be keeping attentive, more so than any other video game I've played, clashed with the smooth, soulful, leisurely, wholesome sound of The Way I'm Living. An album that commands attention largely through grace and introspection only bringing in driving percussion when it absolutely needs to. The tranquil mood the album put me in no doubt made my game worse than usual, but in those hours of reflection, of listening, and listening again, on Spotify of course, to an album that would fundamentally alter my perception of music, perhaps even the world, I found things far more important to me than trying to get good at a game I was never really going to master. You see, 
Amongst other things, the way I'm living made me realise the importance of the passion and sincerity of the artists I listened to, as opposed to how much they related to me or agreed with me, or indeed just their technical quality or what have you. Yes, having experiences, ideas or emotions to cling on to and relate to does help us appreciate artworks, but sometimes strength of vision and honesty of individuality is equally important in allowing us to empathise with the work. With this album, the fact that Leanne herself didn't write any of the songs and that they were each contributed by different writers is a testament to how well the production came together and how much of a vocal presence Womack is. It's an album with a clear sound, intricately woven themes and a strong sense of dreamlike cohesion. And even though I can't relate to it all, that cohesion is captivating. My point here is that, even though The Way I'm Living is a blatantly and intrinsically spiritual album, and even though I myself am not a religious person, despite growing up around religion, rather than annoy me with its overt references to God and heaven like other openly religious works have, and like it might for other fervently non- or anti-religious people, The Way I'm Living spoke to me, made me feel a part of something bigger than myself. Indeed, for all intents and purposes, listening to it was, and is, quite a spiritual experience. It's time I should start talking more specifically about the album itself, about the songs and Leanne Womack's vocal performance. I'm going to now give a rundown of the songs on the album and how they build towards its mesmerising vision. Now, I don't know music theory, can't even play an instrument or anything, so this is based mainly on personal listens to the album and my attempts to understand why it moves me so deeply. So let's dig into The Way I'm Living from the start. We start with the aptly titled Prelude Fly, an angelic, soft ballad that starts with a pleasant, driving acoustic guitar melody and features no percussion, indeed, no other instrumentation at all. Fly, wish I could fly with you High, just like the angels do Indeed, the slight scratching of the loose acoustic guitar strings pretty much serve as the thumping of the percussion, driving the slow, close eyes, head bobbing induced by Leanne's soulful cries about losing a loved one and wanting to fly with them like angels do. The song is the perfect opener, introducing the mellow, introspective combination of calmly powerful vocals and laid-back instrumentation that defines most of the album as well as the themes of love, loss and spirituality that Leanne will continue to explore. It also hints at a driving conflict of the album, the line I know it's wrong to long to be gone foreshadows the juxtaposition of virtue and vice, spirituality and sin that is central to the album. Indeed, it's what the title track The Way I'm Living and the likes of Sleeping with the Devil will later explore. It introduces an album that's all about being yourself, recognising your flaws and expressing your inner beauty. And that links to its heavy use of spiritual imagery, which is perhaps most obvious on second track All His Saints, one of the album's catchiest and fastest songs, a welcome contrast to the low-key opener. And all his saints will have the mercy of a life eternal to freeform electric guitars and the tapping of tambourines, Liam is optimistic and empowered, ensuring us that one day she'll walk with Jesus in heaven. As much as I can't relate to Leanne's beliefs, it's hard not to get swept up in the confidence of this track, which kicks the album into pace without jarring too much with its soulful, mellow passion. We then kick back to another soft, sweet song, Chances Are where Leanne to multiple layers of guitars that create a melancholy, slow dance beat over simple bass and drum lines, ponders on a potential romance as she watches someone across the bar. Chances are I took a wrong turn Every chance I had a turn to take The bar, like the diner pictured on the album cover, is a classic Americana image of romantic loneliness and in this song, Leanne accentuates the image's power, reflecting on the heart she's broken, mainly her own, as evidenced by the incredible line. And I guess I broke my own heart with every chance. I had a heart to break. And creating a vivid, heartwarming picture of relationship anxiety after a history of heartbreak. 
I'm not sure how much of the song is directly inspired by Leanne's own experiences, but it helps craft the image of a modern, polished country genre passionately hearkening back to its roots, as Hell or High Water explores the effects of old western culture on the state of Texas today. It's another fantastic showcase for Leanne's transcendent sincerity and love for singing. Then we move on to the title track, The Way I'm Living, which builds on the admission of flaws and mistakes that drives a lot of the reflection of Chances Are, except this time with a much faster, heavier backing track. Oh, mama, the way that I'm living, lying in a sinning and I just can't change. It opens suspensefully, instruments layering over each other one by one until Leanne comes in with a symbolic story about meeting the devil on the side of the road. In this case, it's a meeting of temptation, the song exploring alcohol, partying, lying and a sinning. One of the album's more viscerally exciting tracks, it's also its most exemplary of the exploration of Leanne's dark, flawed side, which is so important to the album's classically spiritual concept. It's got the sort of sly humour you'd expect from an old country fable, with the line, Oh, mama, the way that I'm living, if I ever get to heaven, it's a doggone shame being one of the album's lyrical highlights, and the guitar solo and string section that crash out the song. Hell yeah. And then, just like that, we simmer back down to the leisurely, sorrowful piano melody of Send It On Down, one of my absolute favorite songs on the album. Jesus, can you save me? From going crazy. It's another sad, moving reflection on lost love and the passing of time, one built on quiet, creeping instrumental progression that accentuates Leanne's vocals and harmonies from a male backing singer I can't currently identify, only when it serves the song's power. Opening with matter-of-fact yet emotionally heavy lyrics about dad owning a hardware store and keeping the tone both directly personal enough to connect and vague and generalized enough to feel universal, it gives off an almost surreal feeling, reminding me somewhat of Twin Peaks, and affect another favorite modern country album of mine, Brandy Clark's Big Day in a Small Town, also thrives on. Going off of this dreamlike universality, the imagistic line Sitting in the bleachers at the football field which is so classically American small town, just gets me every time. And naturally, the song's heavily spiritual as well, the main idea of the chorus being Leanne asking for Jesus to send on down guidance, support, something. Of all the songs on the album, this one feels the most timeless and the most important. Next, we move on to the relentless Don't Listen to the Wind, one of the album's more driven songs, which deals with the memory of a former lover that Leanne can't shake. Don't listen to the wind to the rain. It's one of the more poetic songs in the album, or at least one of the ones where I had to actually read the lyrics rather than just listen to get an understanding of them. But the chorus is great, implying that in the sounds of wind and rain as she tries to sleep, Leanne can still hear the name of her former lover haunting her. Tracing memories, it adds to the surreal feeling of the album. And, to boot, it's one of the louder, more intense tracks, though following a similar general progression and harmony with an unidentified backing singer, as Send It On Down. The opening of the next track, same kind of different, features a tranquil vocal solo from Leanne, a recurring feature of the album's bare, emotional sound. You are the same kind of different as me. Steady percussion and strings accentuate later parts of the song, but in general it's a pretty pure encapsulation of the album's gorgeous, simple but effective country sound. Lyrically, it's a pretty high concept love song, Leanne singing about a lover that's different, but in similar ways to her. It's a fun, low-key track at the very middle of the album, as usual finding its most powerful moment when the music relaxes for a moment to let Leanne's vocals do the talking. Next we have Out on the Weekend, this beautifully smooth, wistful track about loneliness, longing, and trying to move along in a life that features some of the most indescribably catchy vocal delivery on the album. See the lonely girl out on the weekend. I'm not musically educated enough to explain why, but I can't get enough of the way Leanne moves along the melody in lines like this. Think I'll pack it in. Get down to LA. 
It's a moving track to close your eyes to while slowly bobbing your head along, and it's stunning how well it continues the consistency of the album's sound, themes, and evoked images. The song, fun fact, was written by Neil Young, whose Heart of Gold is another one of my favourites. Night Wind continues the wistful mood, featuring minimal preliminary percussion, and again allowing Leanne's voice to shine. Hey, old night wind, it's good to hear from you again. It's perhaps her biggest belter on the album, as she sings about a true love she left and can't go back to. It adds to the images of late night reflection of Don't Listen to the Wind, again using the wind metaphor to explore fleeting, longing memories. The particular effect it gives off reminds me of the feeling of Frank Ocean's Blonde, one of my favourite albums of 2016. The feeling of soft, nostalgic yearning is one that gets me every time in art, and on songs like Nightwind, it's at its perfect state. Slightly more upbeat and quirky in contrast, yet nonetheless continuing the romantic imagism of the previous tracks, next we have Sleeping With The Devil, which brings back the spirituality built in earlier tracks and central to the album's synthesis of classic country and modern living and loving. I've been sleeping with the devil. It's a very metaphorical song, again having Leanne admit to a darker side, though no less pleasantly and tunefully as on former tracks, despite it being of the twangier, more traditional quote-unquote country or bluegrass songs on the album. Then, late in the album, we have, for me, its strongest moment on Not Forgotten You, which I might as well now call one of my favourite songs of all time, considering how much I've listened to it removed from the album. Leanne delivers one of the catchiest, most gorgeous reflections on past love that I've ever heard. I have not forgotten you. It's got everything that makes the album great, but with a more accentuated guitar and fiddle-driven production, smooth, mellow instrumentation that allows Leanne's voice to stand out, catchy line-to-line -line vocal delivery, a song progression that capitalises on the power of its message, and a surreal combination of universal simplicity and genuine individuality that gives off a timeless classic effect. It's a pitch-perfect country song, and plays so well near the end of the album. After Not Forgotten You, we jump right into the vibrant Kenny Price cover, Tomorrow Night in Baltimore, one of the more immediately rhythmic tracks that eschews the stop-start reflect motion of the rest of the album in favour of a determined, fast, repetitive rhythm of thrusting guitars and thumping drums. Her head rolls back and forth against the pillows of her long black shiny hair. Now knowing that it's a cover of a 70s classic allows me to understand the sharp difference of lyrical perspective, but it's probably the least vocal-centric song on the album, providing a perfect musical crescendo that Leanne comes along for the ride for. Indeed, it gives off the impression of a road trip, an effect added to by the setting and movement implying title. It more or less builds to the album's emotional climax, providing a bit of uplifting excitement that leaves you wanting more perfect for the album's penultimate song, as it leaves me in the mood to restart the thing and listen again. And again. And again. But not before the wonderful closing track, When I Come Around, which caps off the album on a wholesome, determined note, as if the blissful road trip of the previous song has reached an optimistic high as Leanne looks to the future. It retains some of the lyrical reflection and melancholy of the album building up to it, but finds a more summery tone, Leanne singing about chasing the sun and assuring us that she'll come around. It's a huge smile inducer, a warm, bright ending to an album I can't help but love. Indeed, here, doing this voiceover, I'm kind of smiling just thinking about the song and how the album ends in general. By this song, I followed Leanne's journey through life and love, and I'm rooting for her in this Everything Will Be Okay empowerment tune. Her voice calmly guides us through the images and feelings of the closer as acoustic guitars, rising strings, and the album's most excited drums put an exclamation point on an album largely made of commas and ellipses. And then, the last note of the string section strike, and the way I'm living is over, and I sit every time, immensely moved and empowered by what I've just experienced. And I want to listen again, and again, and again. The Way I'm Living is an album I always come back to for inspiration. 
It's so comforting, so ingeniously simple and passionately delivered, so personal yet universal, so dreamlike yet grounded in real feelings, so cinematically progressed yet lush and mellow, and its sound, a soft-spoken yet confident traditionalist country with classic song structure yet a depth of focus that defies convention, is one of the most distinct and powerful in modern music. This album means a lot to me. It showed me that no matter the experiences of an artist, no matter their beliefs or style, music can speak to you in ways that you don't expect if it's made with enough vision and sincerity and passion. Passion for life and for music itself. And it, for a long time, has served as one of my most treasured pieces of empowerment and escapism. Combined with gorgeous album art, a strong sense of thematic and introspective purpose, and impeccable country production, it's one of my favourite albums. And that's why Liam Womack's The Way I'm Living is the first of Cameron's picks. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed that analysis, and if you stuck for the whole ride, thank you very much. There's certainly a lot more I could say about this album, and I discover new things every time I listen, but I'll leave you here for now. All I can say now is go and listen to The Way I'm Living, and hopefully it can give you some of the joy that it's given me. Stay tuned for more editions of Cameron's Picks with other albums, songs, films, and maybe more. And let me know in the comments what you think of the album, and what albums have influenced you, changed your life, or provided continuing joy and inspiration. Uh, but as for now, this has been uh, Cameron for Gambas TV, signing off.